Hi, it's Dave from Driving Venture. Welcome back to the channel, and today it's Costco Drives, episode four. So thanks so much for tuning in, and hopefully you'll get something out of today's episode. Costco Drives number four now. Wasn't quite a Costco drive last week. I uh, had to go up to Kendall for a, a drive of that fabulous Moorish PTS Grun GT4981. So we're going to get on to that. But in today's video, we are going to be doing some more viewer questions around Rolex, around waiting lists. So we'll get into those uh, very, very shortly. Then I'm going to. Uh, talk to you about my Rolex 16610 which I'm wearing today. Before I do any of that I'm going to pay to go through this bridge again. Thanks a lot. Cheers dude. 12 pence in Roger Whittaker's back pocket. He owns the Manchester Ship Canal, the guy's a multi multi-millionaire. Billionaire, but he's lost a lot with the uh, Trafford Centre and he sailed into, even though he had chairs in it when it had uh, was bought by Into and so then collapsed. And, uh, anyway, never mind. So, we'll do a bit of a dive into the, excuse me, the 16610 Submariner. Then I'll talk to you about how I came to get this swatch. Um, my story started with Rolex with a Rolex 16610 but it wasn't this one so I'll, I'll talk to you about that and then we'll talk a bit about uh, the cars that are coming up on the channel and then we'll talk about uh, what we can look forward to in terms of uh, cars to see yeah cars to see on the channel so reflections on the uh, 981 GT4. I'm looking forward to sharing that with you anyway. So, my Rolex 16610. Well, I'll take you back to 1995. And my love of Rolex, or really my love of really wanting, or my desire to really get a diver's watch, that's what it was. I really wanted to own a diver's watch. And so I was very young, I always wanted to have a diver's watch. And the quintessential diver's watch, the watch which has done all the talking where that's concerned, is obviously the Sea Dweller. Scrap it, what the hell am I saying? Is the, uh, is the uh, Submariner. And why did I want to get a Submariner? Well, I'll take you back to all the Bond films. And one of the most Exciting films I ever saw with James Bond was The Live and Let Die with Jane Seymour, you know, Mr. Is it Katanga? <laughs> with, the, with the hook on his arm, anyway. There's a couple of bits in that film which I'll never forget. The one of them was when he had his watch on and he twisted the bezel and it magnetised the dial and he was able to get try for a boat <laughs> and it was was marooned on the island and all the crocodiles were set to eat him. And then later on in the film, I think it was, when he was tied up, I think it was with Jane Seymour, and uh, he used again his Rolex, it was a 5513, and the bezel started spinning. <laughs> he got through the rope and got in the water and managed to escape. So it's just things like that. I think he uses his watch as well to undo a lady's dress, but anyway, let's not talk, talk too much about that one this video so I've always wanted to have a Rolex uh, Submariner so in 1995 I'd saved up um, some money and my dad helped me out and I bought my first Rolex which was a steel Submariner which wasn't this one and that was the thing is that I had that watch for a good few years and really really enjoyed it and then I sold it back to the dealer and I traded it in should I say back to the dealer Whittles in Preston and I went for a mixed metal Submariner, a 16613 with the black dial and the black and gold, you know, the mixed metal 
uh, bimetal Rolex uh, Submariner and I had that watch really for probably a lot longer than I had the steel Submariner and I'll be absolutely honest with you I really regret selling that watch because it had a number of unique features which they don't have obviously more uh, or they didn't have on the later uh, Submariners before they went into the ceramic line so one of the things it had obviously was a tritium dial and that, those tritium plots and markers they ultimately go a lovely kind of yellowy colour so obviously there's that and then also on the bracelet as it comes up to the case it had what's referred to as split end link so the, the way it attached to the actual case was different and it also had the pinholes in the lugs as they was commonly referred to it so all these little subtle things that changed as Submariner got a little bit more updated the bracelet was a 93150 which is different to the one I'm wearing on the newer ones and uh, you know with just a watch I really regret selling and I have looked occasionally to see if I could get myself an older style Submariner because again they're going up and up and up so it was a few years later when there was wind that the Submariner was going to go ceramic bezel you remember they brought out the GMT first of all the solid gold GMT with a ceramic bezel then the mixed metal then the steel GMT came out and then what happened was they were going to bring the Samaritan around. I could see it coming so I tried very hard to get another one of these, another Samaritan again before they were discontinued and again I know I'll get to Whittles eventually, they'll watch the book there but I remember getting on the phone and I rang about, I must have rang about seven or eight or nine or ten dealers up and down the country and I eventually uh, managed to find one that was in stock in Berries in um, in Windsor. So I was going down to London for some work and business. So I rang them all and I said, yeah, I want the watch. Can I, can I, can I get it? They said, no problem. I put, took, took a deposit. So I paid the deposit. I drove down, went to Windsor the, the, the day before um, my course in London and uh, picked this, this watch up. And what's, I'll get it off my wrist in a bit and show you it, but a bit more closely, but what's unique about this watch is, is that Rolex, they move from having like number plates, like an A, B, C, D, F, G serial, the letter then the numbers, they moved into what, what they commonly refer to now as a random serial format. And they did, excuse me, they did that when the ceramic bezel generation of watches began to be supplied to dealers and this watch is on a random serial number which just makes it a little bit more unique they're not very common finding a a submariner 16610 on a, uh, a random serial it's just you know when you see them come for sale i've rarely seen them but yeah, it's got a random serial and it also has the rehaut inside, which is again, which is a, which is a modern a modern thing that uh, that Rolex brought out. So so there we go. So that was me stepping back into a Rolex steel Samarano 16610, the aluminium bezel, the classic black and steel look. It was, it was the watch that I'd regretted selling all of those years ago. And to have it now in my collection is just fantastic. Um, and I just absolutely love it. Uh, I absolutely love it. Another little thing they changed on this watch, the later ones before they went into ceramic, is they put an anti-reflective coating on the glass. And so the bubble, which magnifies the date two and a half times, on the older bubbled uh, five uh, digit uh, reference watches, they didn't have that coating on, but they put it on to the very, 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 very last few. I think the last few years of production so that's got uh, that, this watch has got that uh, on it too so there we go that was that's a little bit about the Samana but I'll, I'll get off my wrist in a bit and I'll, and I'll tell you more about it so, uh, so there we go so uh, viewers questions okay I've had quite a few so we'll, we'll go through as many as I can well, as many as I can answer so Authorised dealers lists. How do I get on an authorised dealer list? Well, it's like I said in my last video, if you as a dealer are not getting very many watches, 
then the question has to be the question has to be how am I going to look after those customers that want to watch and they'll do it with a list so some dealers will add you to a list and some dealers will say well no I can't put you on the list and when they say they can't put you on the list they're just being realistic because the reality is if they were to put you on a list you'd probably be so far down the list that it would almost become like you're not on the list so how to get on a Rolex dealer waiting list well you've got to purchase something from the shop you've got to get to know the staff that are in the shop and you've got to be prepared to be patient and wait and again as I've said before if you go in and ask for a very very exclusive watch that's difficult to get hold of like a sub date Daytona where you can just forget it but you know the dealers they're actually creating a rod for their own back by putting you on a list with other people when really the chance of you actually ever coming to near the top of that list and getting a watch is virtually zero. So I think they will be prepared to put you on the list at some point if you've purchased other things in the shop. I was in a Rolex, a Rolex agent about two years ago, something like a year ago, something like that. And there was a guy buying a solid rose gold GMT, a lovely watch. And um, I overheard that they were offering him the opportunity to go on the list for the Steel Daytona. Well, if you're spending 30 odd thousand pounds on a watch, a dealer can't really say, well, I'm sorry, I'm, I can't put you on the list for the Daytona. But unless you buy a solid gold watch, I think the Daytona is just completely out of the question. So the question, as I say, is people do ask, are these lists real? Well, I think some of these lists probably aren't um, because they've got preferred customers that can probably reel off the top of the head. 15, 20 people they could just pick up the phone to and the watch would be sold to them very, very, you know, very, very quickly. So running a list, actually, it's become another thing for the shop to worry about. And so I think in some cases, lists just, just a bit of a waste of time, really. So. Okay, another question I had from another viewer was, what Rolexes don't I like? <laughs> well, I have to say, I'm not really too enamored with the uh, Cellini range just doesn't do it for me I'm not really into that sort of thing um, I don't I'm not really into the, um, the date just really it's not not really my thing I'm really into sports watches so out of the sports watch range Yachtmaster 2 probably not something I would ever really consider buying if I'm honest I have thought about the white gold one but it's so expensive and I don't do yachting it's just just not for me really um, so yeah, Yachtmaster 2, I think the Sky Dweller, again stunning watch, probably not my thing. Um, I, don't, I think one of the things I don't like Rolex, that Rolex have done very recently is they've put a Oyster Flex um, rubber band on the, uh, on the Sky Dweller and I think it, it certainly suited a uh, certainly suited a, um, a leather band for me so there we go okay another viewer said should I trade in my Submariner ceramic Submariner date for the new one and do you know I've got interesting, interesting thoughts on that because the thing about Rolexes is the longer you have the watch then they tend to go up more and more in value so if you're someone who's probably going to be maybe only ever able you can see yourself as only ever really been able to have one watch or you know you don't see yourself as having more than one and you've got the current Rolex sub date and you want the new Rolex sub date if you can get on the list and get one then if you want the newest thing then then go for, go, go for it my philosophy has always been that if a watch is in production like the new Submariners are in production it's going to go on for 10 years at least you would say so if I was to take my ceramic sub-date and then trade it in and get the new ceramic sub-date, maybe I'm just best biding my time and then eventually I'll have the means to get the, you know, the new one and I've also then got, got, got the, uh, the original sub-date. Because the thing about Rolex, if you look at the catalogue and you go back in time, 
the older Rolexes get, the more valuable they become. And that's a big that's a big thing that people miss. It's a little trick that I'm telling you now is if you hold on to your watch for long enough, it only ever goes up. Um, so I would say the newest thing, yeah, it's nice to have it, but you know, there's, there's a lot to be said for having an older watch. This watch costs me £3,690 and I think today, again, I don't like to sell my watch and sell it, but we're probably into 10, 12,000, maybe a little bit more. So not a bad investment for a watch that I've had for a few years. Now, if I'd have sold it a few years ago, or sold it as soon as the uh, ceramic one, ceramic one could go on my wrist, then I wouldn't have got the same amount of money then uh, as you are gonna get for them now. So I think there's something to be said for holding on to a watch and uh, enjoying it, and then adding to your collection as, you, as your circumstances improve, because most people's circumstances to get older tend to have a bit more coming in and you know maybe they've got a bit more disposable income and they can add to a collection rather than just have one and then get the new thing and so on and so on and so on. Okay and then finally we're almost now at Costco. The final thing I want to talk about is wear and tear on your watches. Now some people when they get a few scratches on the watches and they get you know they get worn they call it patina and um, they get all a bit upset, oh I've just got a scratch on the bracelet. It's particularly noticeable on the ones that have got polished, polished, um, you know, polished surfaces like the, the middle middle of the bracelet um, on the mixed metal watches. An idiot driver there, wrong lane to go around the roundabout, wakey wakey. Or if you've got like, you know, a precious metal Daytona, the gold one, you know, white or yellow or rose gold uh, on the bracelet then you've got a watch that is prone to scratch scratch magnets you might say and what I've come to realize with watches is is that pure and simple is that it's gonna happen and I've known people that have got the watch and they've taken it and had it refurbished and it polished up but we've got to bear in mind is every single time a watchmaker gets hold of your watch and services it or polishes it, right? He's removing metal, very small amounts, of course. He's removing very, very small amounts of metal from your watch. And so over time, it can have it can have the effect of making it look a bit over-polished and not very nice. So I'm someone, really, who would only have my watch refurbished when it's serviced. That's about every seven. The newer ones now are sort of every 10 years or so, and if they're keeping good time, then just, then just sort of stick with it. So here we go. This is the Rolex 16610. It was my foray, my, my original foray into Rolex, as you know, they're not this specific watch, but um, so that's the Rolex. Submariner. And what I like about a Submariner is, it's just the day-to-day -day watch that just does the job. And I use the bezel, which you divers use to measure decompression times as they're coming out depths of the sea. That's what this thing is here to do. And it has a dot in the bezel here which glows in the dark. And that obviously interacts with the minute hand. So what you would do here is you'd spin that round to... The minute hand and then the minute hand ticks round and then you've got 10 minutes 15 minutes and so you can measure up to an hour with the with the bezel and I use that for parking meters I used to use this for parking meters I use it for cooking and um, roast potatoes <laughs> And things like that. So I find the bezel on the Submariner very, very useful. Unlike the bezel, say, on a GMT, which is a time zone thing, this is measuring time itself. So that's just an elapsed time. The other thing I love about uh, the Submariners is the quick date mechanism. So the date in the watch, what's in the bubble there? Um, if you haven't worn it for a while and I get out of the safety deposit box and I'm wearing it to wear watch for a bit, then if you unscrew the crown and pull it out one notch, you can spin the date and get the date very, very quick. So one spin just moves multiple dates on the watch. So that's very, very useful. And like I showed you with the uh, the Sea Dweller, it has an extension clasp in the back. You pop out, it goes over a wetsuit, but there isn't the extra long one or extra long extension piece with a screwdriver set because 
that only came with the, the sea dweller. No markings on the case back. It does sit a little bit uh, thicker. Uh, it does it does sit a little bit higher on the wrist. It's got a bit of a thicker um, case profile. So when it's on the wrist, uh, it does it does sit a little bit higher. The case back is a little bit more pronounced, so it does sit a little bit higher on the wrist. You know when you're wearing it. So uh, again, classic watch, aluminium bezel, black dial, white plots, just 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 a classic watch. This has been serviced once since I had it, since I purchased it. Um, and again, I don't worry about scratches and bits. I don't like maybe a heavy, massive dent, but it's not likely to happen. Um, but the scratches and the wear and tear are actually something I actually enjoy my watch. And it tends to happen on the on the, the clasp and round this side of the watch more than more than say on this this side. So that's uh, the Rolex Submariner. But any, any questions about Rolex Submariner, let me know. Or any questions around Rolex. But hopefully some of those um, answers some of those questions from the viewers is useful for you. Um, you don't always need to have the latest watch when they come out. Stick with what you've got. It's interesting to see used Submariner dates, ceramic prices, and the prices for these have seemed to have gone up again on the basis of the new ones come out. But don't forget, there's no more supply. So there's a finite number in the marketplace now, and fewer and fewer will come for sale as the years roll on. You know, try and find yourself a mint, you know, 1680 spread sub, you know, something like that. You know, they're not, they're not easy to find. Or a 1680 sub or something like that, or a 5513. So are those in, um, in as in the agent the other day and the dealer the other day on a leather band, absolutely stunning, stunning watch. Ten thousand pounds, probably a seven, eight hundred pound watch when it was sold. Got up ten times or more in value, amazing. Okay, right, so what's coming up on the channel? Well I've mentioned to you before, but we're doing the Panamera, the new Panamera from Porsche, that's coming up, that's gonna be on the channel very, very soon. And then that will be very shortly thereafter followed by the Porsche 718 GT4. Some people are calling this the 982 GT4. But anyway, I have driven the Spider equivalent. This is the, uh, the Coupe GT4. So I'm looking forward to getting behind the wheel on that. And it's funny how these things happen, but I recently met up with some, uh, some car friends, had a bit of a get together, and we were discussing chewing the fat, and I showed him this chap. Uh, some more content and he has graciously agreed for us to film two cars that uh, they have in their, their lineup and would you believe it the GR Yaris is coming to the channel so we're looking forward to um, to to driving that car very very soon and then and then we're gonna have also the Supra <laughs> and this is super as a car. I remember seeing as a youngster the three litre supers was like, whoa, you know, twin, you know, turbo and engine super, super turbo, you know, wow. Anyway, so I'm going to be driving one of those. And I think I mentioned before a, a Crayon Turbo S 911's coming up. And I've got to get this car on the channel as well. I'd like to get a review on this car, talk to you a bit more about in detail about this car because it is a car I really enjoy driving. It's a lot quieter than the GT4 was. Anyway. I'm going to head and get some fuel, then I'm going to get my supplies, and then on the way home I'm going to talk about my reflections on the GT4. The GT4 981 718 debate it is raging a little bit, which is the best car. From a sound perspective I know which one, but I'm going to talk a little bit about that uh, on the return journey. See you shortly. Okay, so part two then. The return leg, I've not done a return leg for a while. So let's talk about that 78. So let's talk about that 98981 GT4. I hope you enjoy the video. It's a great car to drive, I so loved it. I know the guy who bought that car and owned that car originally. I didn't know the middle owner, but I know the guy who now owns it, and he very kindly let me drive that car. And to spend a full day in a car that took me back to my spider days was something else, it really was. And the great thing about the 981 is, is that it just feels very connected to the road. Road feels a little bit more busy. Suspension's a little bit more um, a bit busy when you're driving it. It's just sharper. It's just sharper than the 718 GTS. And the crucial thing it has over the 718 is it's got the noise. Now, the noise of the 981. For day-to-day -day driving at these kind of speeds, first, second, third, just going along, cruising along. And when you put a little bit of you know acceleration into the, into into it, it just has a fantastic low-down burble. You 
just don't get that in the 718 at all, you just don't get it. Now there are things that can be done to 718 to make it sound good, it's, but it's a lot of money, you know, it's a lot of money, and the car's more expensive. To get a, to get a really well spec GT4 718, you're gonna be talking about 96, 97,000 quid. And then you're gonna to have to put an exhaust on it as well, you know. To me, I don't know, if, you, if you're on a budget and you've got a finite, a finite amount of money and you want a car that sounds good, handles well, it's gonna stand the test of time when it comes to valuations and holding up in valuation, then I think the 981 GT4 for me is a brilliant car. It really is a brilliant car. To think it's five years old now, doesn't feel it. Maybe the instrumentation or that kind of the PCM module, it's not, not the same level, but when it comes to driving and enjoyment, it's very, very good. But what I would say is the 718, if you do invest in an aftermarket exhaust system, then you can release the full the full effect of that uh, of that four litre engine. And it's hard to believe that's got a four litre engine in. The 997 four litre, the GT3 I had was four litre, the one I've got now four litre. And that's running a four litre in 718. It doesn't sound like it. You know, you've really got to get it up with the rev band to make it sound anything. And low down, day to day driving, yeah, it's more usable, but it's just not very exciting. And I think that's the problem. That's the problem. Um, you know, is it worth 15, maybe 20,000 pounds more to have the new one? From a handling perspective, I think it does drive a bit smoother. It's not quite as raw, but you know, it, it, it's firm and it's crisp, 718 GT4. But I'm looking forward to driving that car on the channel very very soon and the GR2 the GR Toyota wow to Yaris we do a little bit of reading around that car I mean I didn't realize it's got over 250 horsepower manual transmission four-wheel drive got some WRC tech in that thing <laughs> there we go well anyway there we go that's Costco Dry's episode 4 a little bit on this Submariner a lovely crisp watch a classic watch if I could say to anybody buy any Rolex first you can get your hands on one the do it everything watch the classic classic looking sport watch for Rolex for me has to be the Submariner such a history 1953 started production been going on ever since then still in production today you've got your Kermit you've got your Hulks you've now got the you know the new ceramic green and black dial you've got everything in the lineup and you can go all the way up to some solid gold or you can have it nice and simply and classic in the steel you can go black or you can go green or you can go green and black so fantastic array of submariners to in, to enjoy in the lineup so hopefully you've got some out of today's video don't forget to drop in some comments or you know what you'd like to see on the channel or our watch in terms of me talking about thanks very much for the viewers questions and as always i'll see you next time